Scream 5 is the sequel to uh, the latest sequel in the Scream franchise, as we said. Uh, the franchise that was started by Wes Craven all the way back in 1996. Um, and, you know, it has some of the legacy characters returning, David Arquette and Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox. Um, you know, the Scream universe, the Scream franchise, what it did... Um, which we talked a lot about of uh, because we did a whole kind of retrospective of the Scream franchise last week. The video is up on YouTube now. You can go, people can go check it out. Uh, discussing the Scream movies, we primarily discussed Scream One and Scream Four. Scream Four was the the latest one before this newest one that came out ten years ago. It's crazy to think that movie came out like ten years ago. It's like wow, that was that long ago. Uh, but um, we discussed that one, and we also discussed the first one, and then a little bit of two and three. Um, as far as the Scream franchise goes, I think, you know, the first one is, mm -hmm. you know, the, it's the original, right? It, it's it's what everything was based off of, what these sequels have done. It's based off the original one. And, you know, with two, um, it was decent. Um, I think three is the worst one of, of the Scream movies myself. Um, and I think Scream 4 was pretty good. Um, and then, you know, we're going to get into how we feel about this one and where this one ranks up. Um, a lot of people, you know, varying different opinions. A lot of people really seem to like they really love it. Um, a lot of people go, oh, yeah, it was, it was maybe okay. Um, how did you kind of feel about the Scream franchise there, Dusk? Well, the first Scream was made, was a script made, and Wes Craven initially didn't even want any part of it. He declined it actually several times until finally, um, I forget what the actual instance but he eventually relented and took a look at it and decided to do it and it was it's one of his best movies outside of the nightmare nightmare on elm street franchise and honestly which forever is always a, more of an i know he's appreciated long, more after his death but honestly just like george romano he i don't think it was appreciated in his time as much he as he is now or should have been at the time and how the hollywood system kind of a messed with him but scream I don't think people remember how big Scream was or how big it was to the early 2000s. Every box art looked like Scream. Like those characters just standing right in front of the right front as the poster. That was taken from Scream. Mm. And everyone did copycat movies after that. It was one, also one of the first real horror movies that, or just movies in general, that took the whole meta aspect and really went with it. Mm -hmm. beforehand they really didn't kind of do that now we just see it everywhere mm -hmm. now it's happening all the time to the point where i'm getting sick of it right i almost want the reverse now to happen can we just go back to a movie being a movie mm. um yeah i mean scream was big on that scream was big on being a, a, a movie that was you know very meta as they say um very much self-referential when it came to the horror movies and horror discussions um that was going around at the time um and scream mm -hmm. and and it pointed out a lot of what people you know kind of got tired of with horror movies and a lot of slashers at that time when freddy you know friday 13th and halloween um you know the, the different rules of the horror movies mm -hmm. right things like there's always the virgin there's always the stoner uh there is always you know to I mean couple having sex and they yeah. get killed you know anytime somebody says exactly. I'll, I'll be right back and then they don't come right back you know what i mean um so this they point out all those kind of different things and it was kind of new at that time it was very fresh and kind of very new um mm. and with the other screen movies you know what the other the other ones did was try to do you know that whole kind of experience over again and with this new one here where you have a new crop of characters here um is is trying to update it more to you know modern times um and addresses itself just like how the other ones addressed itself um mm -hmm. you know with this being as they say in the movie you know the screen five what they call it a requel as they call it uh which is you know it's like well it's not really a sequel but it's not really a reboot it's kind of like this mismatch of other things it's like you know you can't really you know just completely start over and do a complete remake because people will hate that but you know right. people don't want a straight direct sequel which i've never heard the word term requel before i don't know i don't know if you've ever heard that term it, before so i think that's taken from another term i guess try to separate it more to make sure but i've heard i haven't heard that specific version but i know exactly what you're talking about where it's like a a, it's not a sequel but it's like a reboot but it's not quite a reboot because you know they are taking aspects from the other movies and treating them as in canon quote mm. unquote right yeah. yeah and they and they bring up examples like for instance like the new halloween movies um mm. the saw movies you know they kind of take it and like okay you bring in some of the older characters from the new one like what this scream is doing where you bring in mm -hmm. the characters from the first movie david arquette and courtney cox and Nev Campbell, like we mentioned the legacy characters who i think 
they're still, you know, very good. You know what I mean? Um, you know, coming yeah. back as their characters, you know, Nev Campbell, Sidney Prescott, and Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers, and uh, David Arquette, um, who's, this is probably the best I've ever seen his character in any of the movies. Um, yeah. He's coming back. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Dewey is probably one, Dewey's probably one of the most interesting characters of those screen movies. His change of character over time has probably been one of the more interesting aspects of these movies. Hmm. Yeah, and I think he's probably, out of all the people kind of coming back to this, I think he's one of the better people uh, coming back. Mm. Um, then you have a new crop of uh, people to get, kill, you know what I mean? New group of teenagers, yeah. you know, always need some fresh group of t- teenagers to kill. Yeah, you need new blood. Yeah, need some new blood. So, you know, some notable people, you got Jenna Ortega here, who uh, people might remember, she was in the show You. Um, she was in season, was it two or three? Um, mm. it, I think she was in season three, I think it was um um and she was in that season um she was the sister of the landlord character that he met um in season oh, three okay. when, he, when he went to la you also have dylan Minnette here who people know from 13 reasons why um mm-hmm. you also have uh jack quaid who people know from the boys um he's the mm-hmm. one that's dating uh kind of the sydney prescott of this movie the lead character of this movie melissa Bonara, who's sam carpenter um who's that's a nice shout out to of course john carpenter and things like that mm-hmm. um so you got there's kinda, a lot of shout outs yeah t- uh, tons of you know kind of tons of shout outs like that um you also have uh when we said like okay you you know in the terms of a requel you have to have characters who are attached or even bring back characters from the original so in this one the whole big thing is like the killer of these movies in this movie um is attacking people who are you know attacked who've been basically attached to their original murders in the first Scream um, and the killings in the, in the Scream movies. So you have characters, you know, who are like, uh, who is this, this actress named Jasmine uh, Brown, who plays Mindy um, and her brother. And they're the uh, nieces, uh, nieces and nephews of the Jamie Kennedy character from the first one. Uh, the Dylan Minnette character, he's the son of the female uh, deputy who was in uh, the first movie, uh, Marilee Shelton, who's Judy, Deputy Judy. Who was uh, also she was in the last uh, screen movie, so he's the uh, son of her character. Um, so you have some characters who are you know related to the other mm-hmm. people in the movie, um, in the past movies as well. Um, I would say with these new crop of people, um, I wasn't all that much interested in them. Um, yeah, you know, I don't think you know, uh, you know, looking at kind of some of the other movies, maybe again, you know what I mean. I think mm-hmm. it, they don't have really all that much personality. I don't think. No. Um, and they're kind of, it seems like they're kind of flat. Um, and the main person who here, who I, like I said, is kind of the Sydney Prescott of this, uh, Melissa Benara, um, who plays Sam. I think she's also very not that strong uh, of an actress there. Um, what were kind of your thoughts and feelings on the new characters yeah. here? I thought the meta humor works more than it doesn't. I think with the characters wise, yeah, I think it's the legacy characters that get this weird reverence to them. Um, Dewey is my personal favorite. I think he just del- is a much more interesting portrayal in this and kind of feels like a good final encapsulation of that character into, okay, so much time has kind of passed and he's been through all these different experiences. I mean, they even mentioned on one hand, uh, just to like, hey, just to, people who cared about Scream 4, those like 10 people, uh, that character is fine. She actually made it out. She's cool. We mentioned it like a really quick. If you're interested, that's a little cameo for that person. Their name dropped. But he's been through all these events, and now he has to deal with this new kind of set of murders and all this. And you just kind of see him in, in, in this. And he does a good job at kind the actor does a good job at kind of playing that character. As is um, Courtney Cox. It's nice to see her again. Nice to see her outside of friends and just kind of playing this kind of a frustrated individual who has kind of a strained marriage with Dewey and or relationship i should say and uh sydney coming back that's kind of interesting having to deal with her trauma all the legacy characters make much more of an interesting story when you consider a horror movie there's a lot more they could have dived into especially in the meta and these new characters i think like as you said they're just they're just eh some of them have moments of interest but you're like eh eh. Mm. you're just here to die yeah, I did like Mindy. Um, you know, she's mm. the like I said, she's the niece of the Jamie Kennedy character. Um, I did like her. I thought she had good. You know, she, I thought she was funny at times. I mean, she's really you know since she's the niece of the Jamie Kennedy character, she's the one that mainly is the 
the movie nerd and referencing and mm-hmm. she's the one that gives the whole breakdown just like how jamie kennedy did about as appropriate you know this is what you do you know this is like the new rules of the horror movies and this is what the killer's doing and and everything like that so she's kind of i did kind of enjoy some of her moments in there i thought she was i thought she was fine um she's probably maybe my favorite if i had to pick one of of the new crop yeah. um and i think you know it, it, with this one what it kind of does i think a little bit better was with the friend group is mm. that they all kind of they's like well i mean given how that this has happened four different times already and the killer has kind of like usually been a part of a friend group like this it's like well typically chances mm. are it's one of you guys and then they're right. like oh shit it's like oh maybe you're the killer maybe they're kind of like turning on each other which i thought was kind of cool i don't think i've seen that much in the other movies before you know what I mean? It's yeah. like the, the friend group really kind of turned on each other before. Yeah, usually it's played by numbers, and they don't expect them to the final end. And it is kind of nice to see, like, no, okay, there's only a few of us that would know that. We don't trust any of y'all anymore. Mm. Yeah. So I, all I, suspects. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of pretty cool, the way they did that, of how, you know what I mean, it, it, it turns into them kind of turning on mm-hmm. each other a little bit. Um and, you know, we, we talked about, you know, who potentially could have been, like, we, when me and Nick talked about the show, what would, kind of would be in this um, mm-hmm. series and everything. Hey, thanks, John, good for the 30 bits, man. Thanks for showing up. Uh, how are you doing, man? Um, yeah, we, we talked about, me and Nick, about, like, what potentially would be in this fifth one and what it would be talking about. Uh, because, we like we say, Scream gets meta, you know what I mean? And what, mm-hmm. what, what are the new things in horror movies now that they could talk about? Um, you know, and I mean, I, I kind of wrongly guess that they would kind of do, like, a whole twitch thing with it you know streamer kind of thing with it um i'm actually glad they didn't yeah which they kind of already did that in the fourth one already um yeah they kind of sort of already did that already but they don't uh they don't do it here um they do talk about you know more the newer kind of horror movies out now you know what i mean i was like well the slasher thing uh, that's kind of played out nobody really does that anymore it's like now the new stuff as they say is like the elevated horror right you know what i mean they mention all the kind of movies like get out and stuff like that like that's kind of the new thing now um so yeah we did we did i think we did mention that it would probably reference kind of those things like those different horror movies now you know what i mean stuff like get Mm -hmm. out and and stuff like that um and when it came, I think this movie, and I'm, I suck at guessing the killer, uh, you know, at whodunits and things like that. And I think with this one, I think, I don't know, I, I, I had guessed it before when we looked at, you know, I mean, last week when we discussed the whole Scream franchise and I was half right. Like I got one of the killers right, but not mm-hmm. the other killer. Uh, what about, were you think, you think the, the killer in this was too predictable? A little bit. Mm. Which after a certain point, kind of it goes by. About the halfway point, I thought to myself, eh, "It's probably these two, mm. or okay. probably one of the two combinations." Mm. And I am being kind of right. Okay. At least I had one of them. At least. One. Mm. Okay. Um, and then directing this movie, you have uh, Matt Batelli and Tyler uh, Gillett. Uh, they did uh, Ready or Not, which I love Ready or Not. I um, think that's a, a really, really great movie. That's a movie with some more weaving in it, a uh, horror movie, uh, much like kind of like, it's in the style of something like You're Next. Um, you know, very, very good movie. And then they're here to direct this one. Um, I would say the, the, the stabbings, the, you know, in this, very brutal. Um, very, very much. I mean, it was, I mean, in all the other screen movies, it was never really this violent when it came to the stabbings. This one, it's really visceral. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm. There's even one person who gets gutted, you know, pretty much in this. And I think that's just the sensibilities they have, especially coming from something like, you know, doing Ready or Not and things like that, um, that it, it you know, it, it's definitely, you feel it a lot more than I think you've ever felt it before in any of the other Scream movies. Um, what did you kind of think about the violence in these in this movie? Uh, I thought it was, um, I thought it was an appropriate level of violence but i did notice when in the previous screams while it was violent it almost seemed a bit almost pg-13 ish it almost bordered on it mm-hmm. there was blood there were moments where it was bad and people got stabbed but it was never really too visceral never too super violent just enough to kind of get the point across so that like teens and other people could watch it as well mm-hmm. this one did certainly have a bit more of an edge to it at least a little bit more Especially with that gutting scene. I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. You're going for it. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of blood that gets spilt out, um, you know, and yeah, it's it's definitely, I think, way more kind of violent, I think, that I've mm-hmm. seen with the other movies spin. Um, they got a bigger blood budget. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, with this movie, you know, you, you know, given that it's like, okay, it's like, okay, we're, it, it acknowledges what it is, you know, like they say in the movie, it's mm-hmm. a requel. And it's like, okay, but, you know, we're trying to tread new ground and we're trying to, you know, do something different. But it's kind of falls into a lot of those same trappings of doing that where, okay, you're trying, you're not really treading new ground, even though you're saying you're treading new ground. Mm -hmm. You're kind of falling back into the same things that it was with the first one. Um, And... You know, it you know it talks about like okay, you know you got to bring in you know the new legacy characters you know to respect the original and everything like that. Everything goes back to the original. Um, yeah, I mean, cause the original is the original, and you know I don't think there has been anything that has topped you know when it comes to the screen movies since the original. There's been sequels that have been fine and been good, but yeah, there's been nothing that has been as good as that first one because of what it did yeah. and 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 what you know the impact that it had. It's like the Matrix. It's like, yeah. you know, you have the first Matrix. This was a huge cultural impact. It was massive. It's hard to kind of repeat that success again. So when you try to do these sequels and try to add on to things and it's like, oh, well, let's let's continue it on. It just doesn't have that same film. Now, not to say you can't do great sequels because obviously there are great sequels. I mean, you can endlessly name good great sequels and even sequels um, that have been long, you know, you know, been long, long, long awaited coming like Mad Max Fury Road. You know, for instance, that was uh, many, many years before we had another sequel to Mad Max. And then that came and that doesn't even have the original, you know, Mel Gibson in the movie, you know, no. and he's playing it. You know, it's played by t- totally somebody different else. And that even really isn't a, a Mad Max movie. That's a Furioso movie, really. Yeah, that's not Mad Max is it, not even really a character in that he didn't even speak until halfway through that movie. Yeah, I mean, that's and even then. And even then, he's not even portraying the character in the way that Mel Gibson did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that was hugely successful, and people love that movie. So, you can do it. You know what I mean. It just mm. depends on how you do it, and 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 work it in there, and and don't say like, okay, we're you know really changing the game, really doing something. It's like you're you're really not. Um, how did you kind of overall feel about this movie? Well, for all the uh, the metal talk, meta talk, which does work for the more times than not, as I said before, so for all the uh, legacy characters that they kind of bring in, I was never super surprised for all that like oh man we're gonna really change the game it ended almost exactly as exactly as the first one kind of did differently but almost exactly in the end there was a one big surprise which some fans will either like or they won't and uh it but it ends in such a similar fashion that you're like i wish Wes craven was here because he would have had just enough innovation he would throw something in Mm. give a real gotcha kind of like a all right this movie was worth it because you did something different Mm. this if you're gonna make all the meta jokes about oh man this is like a a requel or remake or whatever remake sequel uh actually have fun with that play a lot more with that go against my sensibilities do something really different really just completely change the game make it really like what the heck well, they uh, they, they yeah, actually but... refer they actually referenced that in this movie. Yeah, I know. I think that was funny, <laughs> but I, I just didn't feel it, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> like, I just didn't feel it, unfortunately. They mentioned that, but I, I don't know. It's I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if you feel the same, but it just it. The movie was fine. Like I didn't have any problem with it. It did everything I, it asked itself to do. I like the legacy characters. It's nice to see them again. The new characters went in eh, for the most part, but I did like the meta stuff and the kills were kind of nice. Again, it couldn't go as gratuitous as I think they could have gone, but they went gratuitous more than I thought they would. So I don't know. I I liked it more than I didn't. If that makes any sense. Mm. Yeah, I, I just where I am with it. Um, I thought I was just fine. You know, yeah. um, I thought it was, you know, comparing it to the other sequels, um, hmm, I don't know if I like it as much as I liked four or two, mm. um, you know, but I think it's just fine. Um, and mm. it's definitely better than three for me. But yeah, mm. I mean, like you said, um, 
the best parts of this are the legacy characters coming back. You know what I mean? And I think they have, you know, you know, especially David Arquette's character, as we mentioned before, because mm-hmm. it just feels like, you know, he's really doing something here. You know what I mean? As far as, you know, being the whole kind of this, this you know, th- how his life has turned out since these movies go. Um, and it feels like, you know, if you kind of made this, Maybe you know, do did a little bit more hard boiled stuff, you know, with him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe trying to really investigate these crimes and really trying to piece it together. Like maybe that would have been a different. I almost angle. wanted this to kind of turn into like a pseudo saw. Mm. Pseudo saw. I almost wanted it. Mm. You know. Just the hard boiled detective kind of going after the serial killer, really getting the mind it, almost like a a mind hunter esque. Really kind of go with the meta and that narrative almost. Mm. That could have been really interesting. Yeah, because I think he. I mean, I think this is like I said, best. I think the best we've seen his character in any of these movies before, um, which is which is nice. Um, and you know, a lot of stuff here. You know, I said good kills. Um, mm. You know what I mean. And then when they do the final act in this, um, yeah. again, it, it, it the the whole thing what they do with the final. Act, I guess it's appropriate for maybe modern times. The way they kind of update it a little bit um the motive Mm. and everything um with the kind of killers and everything like that uh i don't know i I didn't think it was ridiculous at all what did you kind of think about the third uh uh, the third act kind of fell apart when you kind of have these characters explaining why they're doing what they're doing and i kind of went oh man really that's why you're kind of doing this (laughs) i mean i get it i get why you're doing it but that it's kind of lame. I was hoping for something a little bit more substantial, but I guess you are young and dumb. Sure, why not? I'll let you have it. Mm. But I wish it was more. I felt it was kind of a, it, like it took more work to make that make it work than I think they could have done in alternative means. Mm. Yeah, but I did like the final like conversations at the end that was kind of nice between courtney cox and sydney and the other characters that was kind of nice especially what happens to a certain character that was nice yeah uh javon good said so the killer is young hmm he's trying to he's trying to piece together the clues huh uh well they're all Pieces together like dewey yeah well they're all young i mean you know what i mean yeah, yeah they're all young um hmm. yeah <sighs> you know to wrap wrap this up um hmm I mean, I guess if you're a massive scream person and you love these movies and you love you a lot, a, a lot of them, um, then I guess you'll really like this one too. I don't think it's that you know much of a huge departure from yeah. the other movies that it goes like, "What the fuck is this?" Um, I think it's no. right. It's no, right along, all. you know, right along the line of what these movies have been. It's just that it doesn't. It wasn't a Matrix Resurrections. <laughs> You know, yeah, it was. You know, uh, wasn't too much of a major re- resurrection situation here. Um, you know, this one it goes all the way with the meta stuff, but that's what Scream has always done anyway. So, mm. you know, that's what it's always been. Um, so, if yeah, if you're a big fan of these movies, I don't see this being too much. You know, I mean, you would like hate this one. Um, it's just that it, you know, it's got the formula, and you know, you you you're making it, and it, there you go. It's it's kind of the form that you had. It's like kind of like a meal you, that you eat, but then somebody adds a salad next to it. It's like okay, it doesn't really make big of a difference if I eat this meal, but then I eat it with a salad. Doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, you know what I mean? So it's it, it's not shaking up things too much. It's not trying to do any. It's like maybe tries to attempt to maybe do some something new, and then says it's trying to be this mm-hmm. kind of new thing, but not really. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I still give it a I give it a stream it. I'd say it's a relatively, you know, good streaming. What about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much on this on the right where you are. You don't really need to see it in, in the theaters. You can just stream it. Mm. Yeah. 